Go team. Talking about spectroscopic transitions, um, this is 8C.1 um, or 9th edition, I don't know actually. So whatever is um, uh, 9.3. Cool. So spectroscopic transitions and selection rules. Okay, so you've seen this picture many times before, hopefully, where there's your electron, photon comes in, what happens? Whoop. All right, it goes up, it absorbs, so the electron absorbs the photon's energy, it goes to a higher energy state, and then when it comes back down, it releases some possibly different wave function, or a uh, different frequency photon. How does that happen? Okay, conservation of angular momentum. That is the way that you can get the photon, a boson, to talk to a fermion, the electron. So um, conservation of angular momentum. Imagine now we are trapeze artists, because why not? Um, so you've got two types of trapeze artists. I'm gonna draw because I don't wanna pretend to be a trapeze artist. Um, although I just said, let's pretend to be trapeze artists. Okay, so you've got the first one who um, is one of those people who's looks like they're hanging, but they're actually trapezing um, here. Okay, so they're going back and forth this way. And there's another one who's going back and forth this way. Actually, okay, so this person is going to catch I put them upside down. Okay, so they're two trapezing, all right, and they're both swinging like this. They've got an angular momentum associated with that trajectory, all right, and so the conservation of angular momentum is that when you get one coming in, you're going to be able to basically grab on and these are going to be, so that momentum is going to be conserved and it's going to be transitioned from this state to this state. Okay, now imagine that this person isn't in the purple, but they're one of those real fancy, there's like a hook or something, and they've got the, that fabric, and they've got it like wrapped around them, and they're doing some sort of spinning this way. So they're, they're spinning like this way, and this person comes in, and as they're spinning this way, this person comes in, how's that gonna work? Not at all, right? So if this person's spinning in this plane, and so if this person's spinning in this plane, and I come in and swing in and try and grab them, their spin and me grabbing isn't, isn't gonna transfer. That's what happens if you don't have the appropriate momentum transfer from an s orbital to an s orbital or a, an s orbital to a p orbital um you have to have well you can have s to p um you can't have an s to a d orbital transition um because you don't have conservation of angular momentum so whatever angular momentum transfer happens from here to here has to equal the integer value of angular momentum that you got from the photon coming in and that's you can think of it in the terms of the the trapeze artist so how do we do that where'd my eraser go like you can answer that question for us ah, right there um so how can we so that's what i'd like you to picture in your head but now let's picture some mathematics so we've got um so the uh for hydrogen atom the transition occurs when delta L equals plus or minus one and delta M sub L equals zero or plus or minus one. So you can't have an electron in the D orbital, L equals two, to go to the S orbital, L equals zero. It has to be S to P or P to D. You can't have it be s to s because one there's no angular momentum in an s orbital l is zero but there's no change in the angular momentum by integer value one photons have integer value one changes or integer value inner angular momentum so you have to have integer value changes of the angular momentum okay um so 
this is these are called selection rules. And if this happens with um, uh, your change in quantum numbers, the transition is allowed. If it doesn't happen, it is not allowed is what we say. Okay, but how do you, how do we know this? This is where quantum comes in. All right, so light has an electric field and a magnetic field, all right? So matter, is an oscillating or at moving charge. And by matter, I mean an electron, which means it has a current. So the charge, if the charge moves, there's my charge, the electron, if it's moving this way, it has um, a current associated with it. And so because it has a current, it's got a charge moving across a distance, that means that it has a dipole that is changing, okay? So if you have an electron and it's got some sort of charge across a distance and it's moving, it's gonna have some sort of oscillating dipole, okay? And so I'm gonna call that Q cross R. And this is my dipole, which I think I already wrote. Yep, dipole. Happy with that? Okay, so now what I wanna do is I want to talk about what it means to spectroscopically transition. This picture, electron to electron, photon comes in. Here, you have psi initial here you have psi final. So you're going from one state to the next state. And we have a wave function that represents each of those two states where this is the resulting energy from, you guessed it, H psi equals E psi. Now, do you have a hydrogenic atom? Are you using the orbital approximation? If so, then you are going to have multiple wave functions all multiplied together. Each one has its radial component. Each one has its spherical harmonic. Multiply, multiply, multiply for every electron that you've got. One of those electrons represents psi one. Go team, okay. Um, so we have our moving charge. So matter has an oscillating dipole. where light has an oscillating electric field, magnetic field, electric field, magnetic field, okay? So where one is the electric field kind of pulsing perpendicular to that, you've got the magnetic field pulsing. Um, and so that self-propagating wave is, the, is light. What you want to happen is the momentum of that self-propagating wave needs to overlap in some way with this wave function, such that that overlap gets it to basically do this. Just like kink up just enough so that there's an overlap between those two. And that's called a spectroscopic transition. And this is true for all spectroscopic transitions. If it's IR, Raman, UV vis, microwave, there's more. Um, Moss Bauer, all of those, unless it's scat. Well, NMR is different, it's resonance. Scattering is still the same. This is where scattering and absorption are the same. Only here, not anywhere else. Okay, so what we wanna do is we wanna represent the wave function going from this state to this state and having the photon help us transfer momentum from this electron to this electron to actually get it to go up. So we call this mu, F to I, actually let me, yep, that's how I got it. It's called the transition, transition probability. Okay, and that transition probability is equal to the transition dipole moment, guess what those little things mean? <gasps> Expectation value. So you take psi final star transition uh, dipole moment um, of the oscillating dipole moment 
multiply or operating on the initial wave function d tau. Cool. So this again is that transition dipole. And that comes from the oscillating dipole. Okay. There's a moment in time in which that oscillating dipole is going to overlap its oscillation, its frequency of oscillation of its electric field because charge has a moving current. Oops, oscillating dipole because it's a moving charge. And a moving charge creates an alternating electric field. If that oscillation matches this oscillation of the transition dipole moment, you have the transition dipole moment operating on this wave function, okay? Then if there is a non-zero expectation value such that this equals not zero, that means that you have, um, so if this doesn't, this whole thing doesn't equal zero, that means that there is non-orthogonal overlap between psi final and psi initial being operated on with the transition dipole moment. I will say that again. If you have it equal to zero, you have no transition. Forbidden. Allowed. Okay, so if you have wave function one and wave function two, and they're like this, there is no possible way that you could get a photon to have, or the oscillation dipole overlap both of these, okay? If, however, I say had it like this, ee, then there's actually a vector, a very small piece of that vector that overlaps this part because there's just a slight overlap. If the transition dipole moment overlaps those two wave functions, you have a transition. And the result of that overlap is going to yield some relationship between L and M sub L of psi final and psi initial, okay? Because there's gonna be some wave function combination that, com that, that, that yields a, um, a non-zero value of your expectation value of your transition dipole moment operator. Cool? If that's the case and it's non-zero, you have some L's and some M sub L's that are gonna be in relationship with one another from the initial to the final state. Again, the initial to the final state. Guess what that relationship is for L and M sub L? Ta-da! You don't need to know any of the mathematics behind it, but you have an appreciation for expectation value. So this is one of the reasons that this is fundamental to spectroscopy because if this is the transition dipole moment derivative, you have IR. If this transition dipole moment is the electronic dipole moment, it is UV vis. If this is the polarizability tensor, you have Raman. Go team. So you have all of these different options for this original transition dipole moment um, that give you the different types of spectroscopic transitions. Go team. Watch this again to grasp it.